Welcome to another edition of High Five Motivational Fitness. I'm Dennett, the host and producer. I'm glad to have the wonderful set of people here in the studio with me. We're here because we love fitness. It's something we do, we're passionate about, and it's something we do for the fun of it and the passion. In the studio with me, I've got Mo. <clears throat> I like to call her Mo. Mona Lisa Fraze. Also, go team Mo. I went and checked out her studio, and there were a couple things that I really liked. One, it said, do give high fives often. There's a sign on her wall that says that. And I'm like, boy, I've got to get her in the studio for that. And the other one is... She is extremely motivated, not just get motivated, but hella motivated. Please help me welcome Motivated Mo. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here in High Five Dinner. Um, well, what I'm going to start off with are showing exercises, OK? And I'm going to have uh, Rose and Matt come up and demonstrate the first exercise. Now, Rose and Matt have been with me for a little bit over a year, and together they have lost a total of over 80 pounds. So, yay for that. Yeah. So, they're hella motivated. So, what they're going to do is going to be an exercise similar to a burpee. So, it's going to be a burpee with a push up row using the dumbbells. So, what they're going to do is they're going to go straight down. So, hands on your, on your uh, hands, okay? Extend out. You're going to do a push up. Good. And then pull up. Good. Row. Very good. On your heels, very good. On your heels, press up, good. Now Rose is gonna show a modified version for people that do have knee and back issues. So you want your hands directly underneath your arms. You're gonna do a push up, chest to the ground. Keep your core tight, extend. You're gonna bring one arm up, row. One arm up, row. And then back on your heels, and then press up. You always wanna keep your chin up, core tight. Press your arms up directly above your shoulders. Now they're gonna do in a regular place. Pace, excuse me. Push up, good. Row, keep that core tight, row, very good. On your heels, you're gonna press up and extend. Now if you focus on what Rosemary's doing, she's actually doing it so that it's for modified for people that do have back and knee issues. So she's gonna go down on her knees, keep her butt low and parallel to her uh, shoulders. She's doing a row, very good. And then she gets back on her toes, on her heels, and then press up. Thank you, Rose and Matt. Next up, we have Vince and Dana, and they've been with me for eight months, and they've gotten really fit and dropped a lot of percentage in body fat since we've been Woo! together. Yes. And what they're gonna be doing is demonstrating super legs. That's actually something I learned from one of my good friends, Josh Thompson, former Strike Force Lightweight Champion. And what this is, is this is gonna work your core and your legs. So what they're gonna do is they're gonna do a forward lunge, pushing off the heel, making sure the front knee doesn't go past the toe. Normally when you do a super legs, it's four sets of 20 reps, back to back. So it's gonna be 80 reps total. Now they're gonna start off doing forward lunges, pushing off the heel, not letting the front knee go past the torso, chest up, core tight, okay? After they do their first set of 10, they're gonna go into a squat. So you wanna stand with your feet shoulder width apart, chest up, core tight. You wanna point your toes out, outward, okay? So you're gonna drop your butt while keeping your chest up, core tight, drop that butt low, and then pop up, okay? You always wanna push off of your heels, so you're gonna do it consistently. Normally you're gonna do 10 to 20 reps of this, and they're gonna do two more. Push off the heel, keep the core tight. Immediately after that set, what they're gonna go into is gonna be jumping split lunges. So you wanna put one foot in front of the other, keep the chest up, core tight, and what Vince is gonna do, he's gonna explode up and then switch his feet in midair, just like that. Now a modified version that Dana's gonna do is for people that may have knee or back issues. So she's simply gonna do a backward lunge, alternating, keeping her chest up, core tight. So they're gonna do it together. Dana's gonna do a modified version and Vince is gonna do a regular intermediate version. So the key is to jump up as high as you can, keep your chest up, core tight. Very good, get your heart rate up. You're gonna feel a burn in your glutes, your quads, your core and your hamstrings. Very good, pause. Immediately after that set, they're gonna go into jumping squats. Again, same position, feet shoulder width apart, point your toes outwards, chest up. You wanna drop that butt low, take keep your chest up, and you're gonna explode. Now you always land on your heels, never on your toes. When you do this, do not lock your knees. It's always important to land on your heels, 
keep that core tight, chest up, okay? You're gonna do 10 to 20 reps of that. Pause. So basically, when you put all of these together, you're gonna start off with the forward lunges, quick feet, you're gonna do squats, feet planted on the ground, and then your third is gonna be jumping split lunges, followed immediately by jumping squats. Thanks, guys. Next. We have Michelle and JP, and they've both been with me. Gosh, we're going almost on a year and a half, close to two years that JP and Michelle have been with me. And they've made some major, major changes. He's really loving the music. That is by the bangers, my good friend Pluto, by the way. Feel the music, feel the music. <laughs> so what we're gonna do, they're gonna do an exercise that incorporates, <laughs> I'm sorry, they're gonna do an exercise that incorporates leg muscles, core, and shoulders. What JP and Michelle are gonna do is they're actually gonna lunge backwards. Their hands are gonna be at a 90 degree angle, so they're gonna get ready to do a shoulder press. Now, they're gonna start off with a backward lunge, and then they're gonna press at midpoint, and then do a forward lunge, okay? So, let's go ahead and start, Danette and JP, and Michelle as well. We're gonna do a backward lunge, keep your chest up, palms face forward, and you're gonna press as you go into a forward lunge, okay? Now, JP is not gonna do a modified version. He's gonna go right into it, so there's gonna be a constant burn in his glutes, okay? Always keep your chin up, core tight. You wanna connect your dumbbells at the top, biceps touch your ears. Okay? Now what Michelle is doing, to keep your chin up, is she's doing a modified version so that when she lunges, when she comes, lunges back, her feet meet at the center and then goes into a forward lunge. What JP and Danette are doing is they're actually going from a backward lunge directly into a forward lunge without that break so it's a constant burn in the glutes of the sedentary leg. Okay? Pause. Thank you JP and Michelle. Next up we have Maria and Ronald. And what they're gonna do is gonna be a squat, flip, squat, press, okay? What this works is your glutes, your core, your quads, your shoulders, okay? It's important like with every exercise, you start with your feet wider than shoulder width apart, toes pointed outwards, okay? You're gonna have your dumbbell placed in the center between your two feet, and when you pick it up, always keep your chest up back straight, okay? So they're gonna squat low, hands directly immediately in front of them, they're gonna bring it up, they're gonna flip it, palms face in, squat again, and then press, okay? Normally when I do this exercise, continue. Normally when I do this exercise, I like for them to be able to use a heavier weight because that second squat actually helps them as momentum to press up and really engage the core, okay? So they're gonna squat, flip, squat, and press. You always wanna make sure that your breathing is in sync with your presses. A lot of people tend to hold their breath, that's why they feel a little lightheaded. You always wanna make sure to exhale and extend. Great job. Thank you, Maria and Ronald. Next. Next, we have <laughs> Annie and Brian, and they've been with me for a year as well. So thank you very much. So what they're gonna do is gonna be working our chest, shoulders, and core. They're gonna get down in a plank position, and they're gonna start off on their elbows. You wanna make sure that your shoulders are gonna be in line with your butt. You don't wanna be, keep your butt higher than your shoulders, okay? So what they're gonna do, they're gonna push off their right palm, extend up, and then do a push up, very good. And then back down on that same elbow. Now when they do this exercise, they wanna make sure that then when they bring that palm back, it's in place of where the elbow is. You don't want to move the hand so that it's directly in front of you. You wanna actually move it in the position of where the elbow is. What Annie's gonna do is a modified version. She's simply gonna get down on her knees. She's gonna keep her butt lower than her shoulders. Good, and just continue. That's for our um, any people that have difficulties, maybe the not a strong enough core, not a strong enough chest. But what this is working here is your chest, your shoulders, and your back, okay? Thank you very much, Brian and Annie. Very good. Next up, we're gonna have another exercise that uh, Rose, high fives, <laughs> great job guys. Next we're gonna have Rose and Matt do an exercise. And we call these W's, because we're from the west side. <laughs> so what we're gonna do, is you're gonna keep your palms, <laughs> yeah, the west coast, exactly. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep your palms spaced out, keep shoulder width apart, core tight, chest up, shoulders back. Now we wanna actually twist your wrist outwards just a little bit, so when you curl, you look like a W, okay? So you don't want your palms right in front of you, you want them just to the side so you look like a W, okay? Okay, so what they're gonna do, you bring the curl up, and from there you go directly into a press, palms faced in, back down from where you came, okay? So I'm gonna have you guys do five reps of Again, you wanna focus on keeping those elbows spaced out, curl, press, always keep your chin up, core tight. The number one mistake that a lot of people do is they always bring their chin down. 
Whenever you're dealing with resistance training, when you bring your chin down, you start to feel a strain in your neck and you start to feel a strain in your back. By keeping your knees soft, weight on your heels, that focuses on you engaging your core so that you're doing the, uh, cor the exercise correctly, okay? Great job. Thank you, Rose. Thank you, Matt. Next up, we have Dana and Vince. Okay. Now, this is a great exercise that I love to do. Um, these are going to be called jack presses, okay? Now, this is going to be an exercise that gets your heart rate up. You're using your shoulders. You're using your core. Now, you want to be careful on the weight that you use. You don't want to use too heavy of weight, okay? 20 is the max that I would go, okay? What you're going to do is you're going to start with your palms faced in, feet together. Just like a jumping jack when you extend out and then in, you're doing the same range of motion, but at the same time, you're extending your arms, you're twisting your wrist here, and then bring it back down. Keep your core tight, make sure you exhale to extend, and then bring it back in. Go ahead, extend up, down, drive it straight up. Keep that core tight. You don't want to lose your rhythm. The slower you, your pace is, the harder it is. So you want it to be constant and fluid. What um, Dana is doing is she's doing a modified version. Instead of using two dumbbells, she's simply using one dumbbell, holding the dumbbell by the head. You want to bring it to the chest, keep the chin up, extend up, and bring it down, okay? So you always want to focus on your breathing. Like I tell all my clients, exhale as you extend. Great job. Thank you, Vince and Dana. Next up. What is this? Okay. Next up, I have JP and Michelle. Thank you, guys. I have JP and Michelle, and what they're going to do is they're going <laughs> to... What they're gonna do is they're gonna do abs, okay? Now I not so now I know not everybody has access to a medicine ball, so we're simply using dumbbells for resistance. What they're gonna do, you're gonna lie down on your back and you're gonna keep your feet shoulder width apart, and you're gonna start with a dumbbell or medicine ball at your chest. Keep your head flat. What you're simply gonna do is you're gonna extend the dumbbell or the ball right behind your head. You want it to touch the ground so you're engaging your upper part of your abs. You're gonna bring it to your chest and simply drive it up, always look up, press the dumbbell towards the ceiling, and then bring it back down to the chest and then back, okay? So you want to bring it behind the head to the chest, extend up, exhale, and bring it back to the chest and come back, okay? Now the biggest mistake that a lot of people make is they dig their chin into their chest. When they dig their chin into their chest, what happens is they feel a strain in their neck. You want to find a focal point on the ceiling or in the sky if you're doing your workouts outdoors and keep your chin up. Also, exhale as you extend because when you hold your breath, you're not engaging your cores in its entirety for its full potential, okay? So you want to bring it back to the chest, drive it up. Not only is this working your upper abs, this is also working your shoulders and your triceps, your chest as well, with depending on how much weight you use. Thank you very much. All right, next. I have Ronald and Maria again. And what they're gonna do is they're gonna be doing lower abs. Now, a lot of people have a hard time with their lower abs because of back issues. What I found with this particular exercise, it relieves some of the strain in the lower back. You're gonna lie down with your back flat. Either you can place your hands to your side, directly to your side, or just like a T as a shoulder. Or for those that do have a little bit of problems with the lower back, you can just simply cross your fingers, um, thumb to thumb, and uh, pointer to pointer, right underneath your tailbone for a little additional support. You're gonna start with your left, your, your left leg, bent at a 90 degree angle, just like this, perfect, okay? When you bend your knee at a 90 degree angle, first you wanna drive the ankle towards the chest up fast, and then bring the heel down slow without it touching the ground, and then drive it back up again, okay? So we're gonna go up, breathe, and then down. Perfect, up, down. It is a rocking motion. You're using a little bit of momentum, but simply the motion of bringing your heel as close to the ground as possible without it touching engages your lower abs for you to control the motion. So you're not just using momentum. You'd only be using momentum if you allow your heel to actually touch the ground. Do you feel that in your lower abs? Okay, perfect, all right? Let's go ahead and switch on that one there just to even it out because we don't want one strong ab, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and switch that out, okay? You always, <laughs> So what you want to do is you want to bring that ankle as close as you can to your chest and then slowly drive that heel towards the ground without it touching. The number one mistake that a lot of people tend to make is that they straighten out their leg, which I don't want you to do. Keep your leg remaining at that 90 degree angle. Keep that form so when you extend that heel towards the ground, you're not compromising your form. Okay? Thank you very much. Great job. Now when it comes 
Oh, thank you. Annie, sorry. <laughs> Annie and Brian. Now what I'm gonna have Annie and Brian do is they're gonna be working their shoulders. These are gonna be called front and side raises. Your palms are gonna be directly in front of you. You wanna keep your feet shoulder width apart, weight on your heels. Keep your chin up, core tight. Start with your dumbbells right in front of you. You're gonna raise your dumbbells up without swinging your torso at shoulder height. Bring it down, flip your wrist in, elbows are slightly bent, and then bring it to the side. Good, just like that. Now you always wanna keep your chin up, core tight. So the motion will be very fluid, front and then side. Perfect, breathe. Exhale as you bring it up. Try not to swing your torso, and then side. A modified version of this for those that like the extra challenge but a little bit of coordination is all you simply do, pause, is you're gonna do front, flip it, and side. So you're doing a front raise and a side raise. Now the key is to not actually swing your torso. So if you do a front raise, switch, and then side. Let's try that. Front, keep that core tight. Remember, always keep your chin up. Core tight, knee soft, perfect. Try not to swing your core. Very good, breathe. Good job, let's get one more in there just for good luck. Very good. Thank you, Brian and Annie. And all these exercises that I suggested are exercises that people can do at home. I know a lot of people feel like they need a gym and they need a whole bunch of equipment, but all we simply use is just our own body weight and a pair of dumbbells. Hey. Right. That's a job. lot of fun. Yeah, I'm starting to sweat already. Okay. <laughs> you guys sweat? Good job. Yeah. yeah. Hey, high five, everyone. High five, everybody. High five. Woo. Woo. High five. As you see, fitness can be a lot of fun. It's not just about struggling and doing something you don't want to do. It's the thing that makes you feel alive and awake and passionate. So I, I hope that some of our excitement and enjoyment will find itself in you and you can go out there and just push a little harder and get hella motivated as Mo says. That's right. Woo! I got, that, I got a great team. I got a great team. Yes, you do. That people. was a lot of fun. Absolutely. But I do confess I'm kind of looking forward to having uh, some Pink Fairy after. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Pink Fairy. So I wanted to ask you a few questions. Okay. This is a lot of fun, mm -hmm. the, having the group here to exercise. Let's uh, okay. step over here. Absolutely. So, hella motivated. That that's a cool sounding name. Mm -hmm. I I like get motivated, mm -hmm. but hella motivated. That really hits at home. Uh -huh. well, Tell me about the phrase. Where'd you come up with that? Well, you know, growing up in San Jose, um, growing up and raised in San Jose, I'm really proud of that fact. Um, and hella is basically slang in in the south in, in the Bay Area, and so hella is in reference to very. But growing up, ever since I was in elementary school, that's the way we refer to things. When we were excited, it was just hella whatever. And uh, Mo, being that my name is Mo for short, short for Mona Lisa, um, it just made absolute sense to just make hella motivated our theme. So were you naturally hella motivated? I did notice that you won a big title back in 2006. I you did. You were I in did. the figure competitor, uh -huh. and you caught the... Miss California title. I did, so congratulations. I did. Thank that's you very, very cool. That's that, that something that I'm very. Oh, okay. Woo hoo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. <laughs> well, tell us about okay. it. Well, you know what? Um, winning the title of Miss California definitely was um, one of the greatest milestones in my life overall. Um, but that's I, a big one for it's, sure. It's a very big one. I mean, being that California is the mecca of bodybuilding and fitness, to win the title Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Uh, is, is definitely um, a huge, huge honor for me and something that I don't take lightly. Round of applause for Mo. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have those signs to see applause. Um, but it's definitely a huge, huge milestone in my life personally and professionally, which has allowed me to uh, use that as accolades for what I do and bring validation to what I do in inspiring other average people in getting healthier. And that's what it's really about. Right. Well, I, when I discussed my upcoming episode two here, mm -hmm. I had some questions. Some people wanted to know what are some good butt exercises? Okay. So what can the ladies and some of the guys be doing to, to build better glutes? Okay. Well, there's a ton of exercise that you can do. But assuming that we don't have much equipment and all we have is just our own body weight, yeah. some great exercises that either men or women can do to work their butt. And let me actually show this to you. Sure. Um, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm not going to use any weights for this one here. I want to just show you the range of sh motion. Yeah. You're basically going to do a curtsy like they do in London, like, uh, good day, mate. Oh, wait, that's not. Is that <laughs> <laughs> wait, oh, wait. That's well, let's see Australia. the exercise. Okay. Well, if it was like in England and they said good day, mate. So, let's see the exercise. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to stand 
shoulder width apart, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to swing that left knee behind your right leg without your knee actually touching the ground. So simply by doing this motion here, without your knee touching the ground, and then back together. Should we all try that? Yeah, let's do it. What you're doing so is you're engaging you swing this it over, part of your butt. Mm -hmm. So go keep down. the core tight without letting your knee touch the ground. Together, uh -uh, only one side. Only one side? Uh -huh. One side here, and then together, feet shoulder width apart, down, and then together, keep the chest up, All core right. tight. Okay. Now, if you're actually you put the adding arm up weight, when you do that too. Excuse me. You put your arm up when you no, do that. No, I, I put my arm up for balance. But okay. if I was actually holding weight, I'd either put like a 45 pound bar on my back, or I'd <laughs> yeah. be putting weights. Okay. So when you put that extra added resistance and weight, you're really engaging this part of your butt. Okay. All right. Yeah. How many should they do for starters? Uh, for starters, without any weight, I would suggest 20, 15 to 20 reps per leg. Per side. Per side, correct. They'll be burning and sore from that. They will, they will. And as they start developing a little bit more strength and a little bit more endurance, then I would suggest actually using weights. Now, part of fitness and is working out, but as I like to say, get motivated, stay disciplined. Mm -hmm. The discipline part, I think about diet and maybe foods not to eat. Mm -hmm. Can you give our folks some tips for diet? Absolutely. Well, the thing is, is that since I train my clients that yeah. leading an active lifestyle and a healthy lifestyle, it isn't just a short-term thing. It truly is a lifestyle. So the word diet has a little bit of a negative connotation to me. It does. It does. I so what I like that. to consider is more just changing lifestyle the, your choices. lifestyle choices. Absolutely. And by doing that, people need to think that when you eat, 80% yeah. of what you eat is a result of how you look. Th there was a joke, I got to interrupt you, that was <laughs> circulating around recently. Uh -huh. It said, you are what you eat, and then the cartoon character said, I want to eat a skinny person. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not quite that easy right. now, is no, it? It sure isn't. And the thing is, everybody's looking for a quick way to lose weight yeah. between you know, fasting and, and diets and drinks, whatever. There's no easy way to lose weight. It truly is making that conscious effort on what you put into your body. And that what you don't put into your body. You I think that's body. more important, Absolutely. what you don't eat. But specifically, I think the number one mistake that I see a lot yeah. of people make, men and women alike, is yes. that they come into the gym, they work their butts off, mm -hmm. they do a bunch of cardio, and to reward themselves, they simply eat a meal that basically is consuming all the calories that they just burned. Yeah. Now, unless you're in a physique, in a condition where you're absolutely content with how you look, then you don't have that room to play. The way I like to tell my clients, be at where you want to be yeah. and then reward yourself. But if you're just putting in calories that you've just burned and you're working towards getting leaner and healthier, you're basically just going to maintain where you're at. Yeah, I think the diet and hitting the lifestyle, mm -hmm. I mean, that's just a huge part of it. Mm -hmm. It's got to be something you love and enjoy and mm -hmm. feel good about and can follow through with. Right. But at the same time, I encourage our viewers and folks to really eat the most nutrient food you can find. Mm -hmm. Eat nature's food mm -hmm. lots of vegetables Fruits. lean meats mm -hmm. don't go for the highly processed stuff right and yes cooking takes a little more time guess what i made for dinner last what? night so i cooked up some chicken breast okay but then i cooked some spinach uh -huh. and just put it in the uh, cast iron pan with a little bit of oil mm -hmm. just heat up the spinach put a few frozen raspberries uh -huh. in there and a squeeze a lemon on it it was great you can make quick simple foods that are delicious mm. and very nutrient uh -huh. And I encourage our viewers to have fun. Right. Experiment around with right. your diet and mm -hmm. come up with nature's foods mm -hmm. that are healthy and fun and quick to prepare. And you know, I want to add something too. Please do. I meet people across the way and when yeah. they find out that I used to be a figure competitor or that, you know, I'm a trainer. Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo! So, you know, and, and, and they think that by being a trainer or somebody that was a competitive figure um, athlete that they think that I've restricted my life completely and yeah. not enjoying things that I like to eat. Well, what do you enjoy to eat? Well, here's the thing. I like ice cream. <laughs> I'm not going to front. I love Ben and Jerry's half-baked ice cream. Yeah. If I were to have ice cream. Now, I don't have it all the time. How often do you have it? Probably once a month, if okay. that. Okay. A whole pint. Hear that, viewers? <laughs> once you should have, like, ice <laughs> cream The truth once comes a out. <laughs> Closet eating. No. But the thing is, in all my clients, I actually, with my clients that I work with, I do give them a food and fitness journal. Yeah. And I give them a journal because I want to see how they're eating. Not to judge them. Let's just see how we can make it better. Mm -hmm. But the biggest misconception that people feel that when they start adopting a healthier lifestyle, yeah. that they have to eliminate the things they love, which is absolutely wrong. Being a figure competitor, knowing how restrictive it is with a diet only consistent consisting of lean meats and veggies only, and none of sounds the fun good stuff. To me. Uh, it sounds good, <laughs> but sometimes when you deprive your thing, yourself of things that you love, you tend to 
um, overindulge and you binge. And that's yeah. the reality of it. And that's coming from somebody so who you need to balance it out a Absolutely. bit more. So what do you do to balance it out? I mean, what should the average viewer out there do to really get a healthier diet and some exercise in their life? First, Where do they find the motivation and what do they do to get that diet? A couple quick tips. The first quick tip would be surround yourself with people who are on board with you. Yeah, Case in point. Case in point. Okay. It's important that you go team. Mo. <laughs> go team Mo. It's important that you surround yourself with people who are on board with what you're doing. If you're trying to lead a healthier lifestyle with coworkers, like gosh, we are with our coworkers eight hours a day. It's yeah. important that you tell your coworkers, this is my goal who's on board. And when you have a support system, it makes it a lot easier to achieve that goal. Absolutely. So for all my coworkers watching out there, be careful bringing the donuts to work. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Go that's, easy on those bagels and donuts and that's stuff. That's the number one sabotage for anybody trying to lead a healthier lifestyle. So we're kind of wrapping up on our time mm -hmm. here. I wanted to tell folks though, there's a bunch of different fitness trends out there. I'm mm -hmm. sure you've seen them all. Mm -hmm. CrossFit, mm -hmm. yoga, mm -hmm. help me name off a few more. TRX, TRX keep naming some. P90X. Insanity. Insanity. I think the most important thing is all of these have their pros and cons, but viewers and people, they've got to find what they're passionate about, what fits with their lifestyle and what they enjoy, mm -hmm. and what they're going to go really put their heart into, mm -hmm. what they're going to be motivated with. Mm -hmm. So. Get hella motivated. Get hella Push motivated. Push that fitness That's out right. there. That's right. Uh, well, Danette, I really want to thank you for allowing me well, this opportunity. Well, I want to opportunity. Thank, thank you for coming here and joining us Thanks. and encourage all, all our viewers to get hella motivated and push your workouts, clean up that diet, have fun. Let's have a big high five, everyone. Woo! Woo! All right, guys. High five. High five. <laughs> I don't even Good have job, high five. everyone. Good job, everyone. Great job, everyone. That was a fun little workout, Mo. All right. Come back for